Richard Derbyshire from Living in a Box. And I'm here to say, keep it up, keep it late with Night Network. See you around. Thanks, Richard Derbyshire there, and welcome to Video View, where at this time, every Saturday night, I'm joined by two special guest reviewers as we take a look at a selection of recent videos. On top of the old viewing television over there, we've got three knobs, which, when all are pressed, stops the video and starts the chat. With me tonight are Wendy James and Kirk Brandon. Welcome, Kirk, and welcome, Wendy. Now, Wendy, you're just about to re-release the track Revolution, baby, after a sort of massive success with, you know, like... I want your love. I want your love. What's the point of you know re-releasing a track that didn't do any didn't do any good first time round? There were two main reasons why we decided to do this. The first one being that in the beginning, when Revolution Baby came out, we got no support from Radio One at all. So therefore, nobody knew about us, apart from magazines writing about us. And then we went when we were on the last tour a couple of months ago. So many of the people knew the song because they'd bought it in indie shops and so on and so forth, and they'd said well, we can't get copies of it, it's been deleted, only a few were released, so... And it's, it proved to be a really popular song at the live shows. And uh, I just thought it was of value enough to warrant it being released again. So it's your decision and not the record companies? Oh, absolutely not. They don't decide what happens to our music. That's good. So you hope it's going to be as big a hit as I Want Your Love? Well, I hope lots of people like it. Yeah. As far as hits go, I can't really concern myself with that. OK, well, um, we'll see some videos in a minute, Wendy. Kirk. Um, you've been away now for like over a year. You had to cancel your appearance at Reading last year, and there's all these sort of rumours about I'm illness dead. and yeah, that you're dead basically. Well, I am actually. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, what's happened? Are you fit and well now? Uh, more or less. Yeah. It was uh, an obscure blood disease called Writer's Syndrome, and uh, <laughs> I enjoyed eight months, you know, on the couch with a dog and the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Watching yourself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what a fabulous time. And um, you're I'm fit, all right. You're fitting well. You're playing Sport Aid tomorrow in Sheffield. Yeah, I'm doing a marathon, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I'm doing the marathon, but you know you're going to be playing as well, aren't you? Yeah, we're doing a, a little spot, yeah. Three tracks from the new album. It's a good cause. Why not? Good stuff. Great. OK, well, let's go on some videos then. And first of all, come, we come to Dead or Alive, fresh from a highly successful Japanese tour with the new single, Turn Around and Count to Ten. something uh, interesting there last week and um, I think it, I don't know which paper it was sounds or something they said to me have you ever shown off your breasts to a uh, sell hit record you know sell records and <laughs> I just noticed it? that uh, sorry did you admit it oh, I absolutely denied it and um, I just noticed that he what's his name Pete Pete Burns Pete Burns was showing his nipples and I wonder if they come down on him so strongly as they did on me but there you go but um it was okay it was all right I mean, well, it wasn't actually. In fact, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> we always get the truth out of people here on that. It takes a bit of time, you know. What about you, Kurt? What was your...? Uh, <laughs> not a lot, to be honest. Yeah. You know, it's good professional pop, good uh, today's beat. You know, seems like a nice boy. Probably could go far. Yeah. Well, um, all, I've, all I've got on Pete Burns is that apparently he's afraid of people thinking he's camp. Um, and that he's an avid reader of the Sunday Sport. He actually has it flown out to him wherever he is within, you know, recent, reasonable flying distance. Well, I think that says something, because you can kind of read the Sunday Sport for a couple of weeks and it's funny, and then you kind of realise that it is just tits and arse and it really shouldn't be read at all. 
Yeah. I mean, it's the terrible thing about it is you get those headlines that are real temptation. I know. And you think, how can they... What is, what is the pathetic storyline that they dug up this headline from? And then you realise you've bought the bloody paper and you're a mug. And they've succeeded, yeah. And they've succeeded, and... exactly. Distribution goes skyrocketing. Well, anyway, let's get on to another video. Should we get off the um, subject of Sunday sport? On to the railway children who flew off this weekend to support the sugar cubes in the States. They left behind their new release. Here it is, over and over. <laughs> I don't know a lot about the railway children, except that they're also in the Gary, the, the lead singer Gary Newby is the most edible man in pop music. Who and said that? Who says that? Oh, the, the music press, you know, various people. I didn't say that. What, did they that. have a poll or something? I suppose so, yeah, you know, one of those sort of smash hits. One of those like really that. accurate yeah, one kind of... of... <laughs> well, I, th I think it's, you know, it's a nice video. It's a good-looking kid. Nice all the girls room. all like him. I thought it was a naff video. It's, it's that terrible sort of, um, let's do it in a church, a recon, you know, reconditioned church, and they have, like, a box or an easel with a piece of cloth Hang hanging on, off you, it. You forget, that... something, you forget something. Yeah. Everybody has to do videos like that. Everyone has to do what some people would term tacky performance videos. I've done Even loads you? of them. Yeah. And they're all rubbish. But well, you, don't, you don't have to. I mean, it depends how much control you take over. You know, we all take control of our records, but then video is the main thing that we all have to do, so you may as well make that as good as possible as well. That's a good point. It depends how much control you've got in your life, yeah. Yeah, I'll go along with that. But I do like the harmonica at the beginning, and mm. I do like the guitar. So, I mean, I'd, I'd come down more on the side of the song and less on the side of the video. Mm. But, Kurt, to take you back to what you just said, I always thought that Spirit of Destiny sort of stood outside of that sort of strong commercial reign. And, I mean, like... We've had a couple you know, of The video for Never Take, Take Me Alive, you know, you tried to... It was brilliant. It was great, brilliant. yeah. I don't think that was a, a sort of a... I mean, is, were you told to do that? Did you not have the decision, in, you know, yourself? Well, I always think, you know, having done some real ropey videos, and I have done a, a few, it's kind of like... <laughs> what you do, it, it's kind of like the standard of people that you go work with. You know, work with ropey people, you get ropey video. Mm. I went out into the desert in New Mexico with um, a bloke called Jeff Barish, who was, who was brilliant. He's a nut, you know, he really is... Actually, he's a bit on the edge as well. <laughs> but, um, you know, and he... What, what we did was we said, right, let's not plan this, let's have nothing thought out, anything. He goes... So we go, me and him and a guy loading the camera, you know, loading the film, said, uh, right, run over there, chase that horse. So it was like Jump that. on that van, <laughs> you know, and this guy <laughs> driving past, and it's kind of like, you know, he was just driving past, but was driving, and he goes, jump on the van. So I led it <laughs> after the van and, and jumped and sort of, you know, hang on like that. Yeah. And I was dragging down a street, and he goes, let go. <laughs> <laughs> so I let go. Cut. It was really Cut. funny. Cut. And, you know, it was... Because he's brilliant. You know, mm. he's got real artistry in him. But the most people that do videos, are young guys, young camera and producers, you know, trying to make a name, and they haven't really yeah, got the you, artistry. Yeah, you can't, you can't blame your bad video on the... You know, a bad workman always blames his tools, so they say. 
And I think, you know, if you, you know, you wrote the record, so you decide what imagery you want to go with it, no matter how. Yeah, but you, you know, you can make so so videos, even, you know, trying that way. It's like, unless the people that you're making it with are up to it, up to doing it, Sure. It, mm. it doesn't happen. Mm. That's my experience. Because I did one with some guys called, um, what's his name? Tim Pope or something. Yeah, and does he does all the cure. He did, yeah, he did the Banshees video, and they showed me the Banshees video, and I thought, yeah, this looks smart, yeah, I like this. And then he did one with me, and it was just absolutely diabolical. Is that the new one? No, no, this was oh. a long time ago. Right. You know, CBS years. Well, look, from so so videos to a new video from so. <laughs> Hang on, this was on the range. No way. <laughs> yes, this is a second single from their Horseshoe and Glove album. See what you think of Burning Bush. <coughs> that was well in there. That was... <laughs> The most redeeming thing about that video was the back screen projection of Elvis. The Elvis footage, yeah, exactly. But, you know, puffy men in puffy hair. <laughs> <laughs> singing in sweet little voices about la di da is just so, as bad as... Wendy, Wendy outspoken, um, James, what's wrong with puffy oh, men, no. then? No, that's a dreadful thing <laughs> to say. Um, how can you, how can you yeah. possibly say no, that? No, I know, After it's a really, you really, really you pick video. Up, you pick up... Come on. I know. Well, all right, then. The main thing, I, I didn't particularly like his voice. I thought it was really... I just like a kind of men, men. That's a really stupid... Why don't you carry on speaking and then... <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, I just didn't find... No, I preferred yeah, Elvis. I, there's only sunny ways you can do a video, I think. And, you know, it's performance. I don't say I like it. Well, would you go and see their gig? No, I mean, it's, it's just a bit too bland for someone like me. You know, I, I go to see the sort of music I'm in, so it's like rock and roll, you know? Yeah. Hard, hard rock and roll. When I go and play, I go kill myself. You know, that's what, how I feel about it. I know. Well, I just felt he was... I, f I wanted a better word to describe it by, but I thought it was rather kind of weak. But in true sexist style, the word puffy leapt into your head, <laughs> Wendy, which is rather <laughs> unfortunate. But um, we're going to leave you now for a couple of minutes, but rest assured we will be back with more videos and more views on this very screen. I'm Mick from Stump. Who are you? Well, here we are again with more videos ready and waiting. Here's Dave Lee Roth, who recently appeared at Donington, and it's the second release we're about to look at from the Skyscraper album. It's a track called Stand Up. Start to finish it's a better side 
Strange sensation. Exhibiting any number 65. That's a trouble. Absolutely great. All over great? Nah. It's, um... It's just sort of fantasy TV, isn't it? It's sort of, uh... You know, for all the kids that are into that sort of thing to sort of fantasise about being, you know, crown topper. Yeah. Going like that all the time, you know, and the girls in the short skirts. When I do don't you... know, it's just fantasy, really, isn't it? Wendy, you were pretty quickly in there. I just find it... Unworthy, ostentatious bullshit. And those models really shouldn't kind of... Oh, well, I don't know. No, I... It... There's nothing good about that at all. Um, what is particularly about the models? I mean, I, I think it's the obvious thing, you know, you think that they're just being abused so that he can sell his records, yeah? Well, they are kind of heightening his so-called manhood, aren't they? Um, but... What do you think? How do you justify, you know, using your sexuality to sell your records in because terms of feminine sexuality? Then, because whenever I appear on a television program, on a record sleeve, in a video, whatever, it's just me. I have had no directions telling me you've got to appear in uh, a stereotyped sexual way so that lots of boys will admire you and buy your record. I'm part of a five-piece band, and I look the way I look. And you will either find that sexual or you won't, but whatever way, it isn't being stylized to achieve a certain effect. Whereas those women are being hired specifically to show off their breasts, creep up and down David Lee Roth's leg to make his record and his persona appear very masculine and sexy. Unfortunately, though, it, there are a lot of women who want to creep up David Lee Roth's leg, aren't there? Yes, they probably are. Yes. <laughs> but, um... And what are they going to do when they get to the top of it? That's what I want to know. Probably be, know, probably, find it probably be disappointed. David Lee Roth, actually, I did an interview with him the other week, and he said that, more along the lines of what you were saying, Kurt, that his videos are vaudeville, and he's satirising the whole thing about rock and roll and, um, you know, sort of women's role, yeah. etc. What do you think well, about I that? I think, you know, I think, you, I think possibly he's gone too far in that it's, it's, it's not a satire. No. It's just, you know, it's just... The pl every played out cliche you can think of, well, that he can think of, is on it. And he thinks that that's what the kids, whatever they are, you know, want. And, you know, it, for me, it doesn't get any points for originality at all. It's just sort of, you know, girls in short skirts, you know, charging up and down. But you earlier and, and, he, and it, it isn't a satire because even if he finds it very amusing and he thinks, oh gosh, I'm taking the piss out of a you know, short skirts, big breasts and rock and roll, all of his kiddie fans that like him are actually going to think, well, that's what I do want. And well, they'll that's be why quite serious. That's why he and does it. And that's the dangerous mm. thing. I mean, that is why people do that sort of thing. You know, that's the very reason they do it. Well, I think he should be more responsible, actually. Even though rock and roll, there are no rules and it's really wild. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. So, we're... You know, the, the difference between you and um, those girls on Daily Ross videos, they're going to, like take me, take me, take me, and you're saying take me if you can get me. <laughs> that may be your, um... No, 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 I'm, not, I'm saying is that it? You know, you're offering your sexuality, but it's you offering your sexuality. I'm not offering it at all. I'm just playing with my band, and it really, that is playing where with your it body. Ends. I mean, in the video, so I want your <laughs> love. <laughs> you're, like, lying on the bed, and you go, I love, 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 all that sort of <laughs> thing. Very great. coy. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, No, but, you know, come on, that, that's, that's, that is the come on, surely. You know, and anyone watching that who, you know, may have just switched on at that point might think... So oh, you're you know. saying that then the men watching my video would then try and behave in the same way as the boy that I seduce in my video? Because I was saying then lots of girls are going to try and behave no, like the I'm girls saying, in David What Lee I'm Ross. saying is, you know, I, I think that you're fairly in control of what you do, but, you know, all the 
sort of accusations of being a bimbo, etc. And, you know, the whole thing of using your... She's sexual... obviously not a bimbo. Well, exactly, you know. I'm... She's obviously using what she's got, the way she does it, you know, yeah, to but do that's it. What I no, meant. No, and that's using okay. is a really wrong word, because I'm not okay. using anything. I'm performing well, if you're not with using my it, band. who is using it? Well, no one. I got if you're not using yourself, who isn't, you know, who is? No, but nobody is using me. You I'd... are? No. You must be aware of well, the way that you I come out on a think, screen. Right, today I'm shooting a video, so I'll wear a dress that's figure hugging so that more people will watch my video. It's rubbish. It just so happened that when we made the single cover to I Want Your Love, Tex appeared as a skinhead, Dave appeared as a rocker, Nick appeared as a punk, and I appeared as what was meant to be the stereotype 60s blonde. And we were saying, well, these have been certain youth fashion cults throughout the 30 years history of rock and roll. That was so? not me saying, well, that was just, you know... For so you're endorsing it then, aren't you? Endorsing... You're, I mean, you're yeah, by wearing it and representing it, you're endorsing it. I'm giving my approval to figure-hugging dresses. Well, no, you said he and represented sexuality. the punk, he represented the skin, no, no, you no, represented, no, no. you know. No, we were just... Because I'd like to think that Transvision Vamp is not a particularly conforming band to the rules and regulations of what music should be like, we were saying, here are four pictures of different youth cults have supposedly been rebellious. Well, Kirk's nodding his head a bit, so I think we'll take that as a cue to go on to the next video, which comes from Soul Asylum, the garage band fresh out of Minneapolis. It's called Cartoon, and it's the second single from their debut album, Hang Time. <laughs> I didn't mind that, actually. I, I, I quite enjoyed that. The video is kind of... Well, videos, I always prefer to see a performance video than a kind of uh, elongated story with loads of actors and actresses walking about the place. And that was good, you know, they're playing live in front of an audience. There's lots of sh shots of, you know, plucking the guitar strings. But the old live... <laughs> the old live... Not the old plucking guitar strings, <laughs> right? Yeah, that old chestnut. But the old live footage video is like... I know what you mean. It's good when it works, which I think is very infrequent. I mean, all those heavy metal videos, oh, yeah. you just get stadium after stadium after stadium. It's just dull. Well, I'd quite like to do a stadium video. Yeah? Fill it with all the fans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is there one big enough? <laughs> Kirk? I think there probably will be for her. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I liked what, it. What I thought it was real good. What do you mean by that? Well, well, I we think it'll probably go all the way up. Oh. I think you do well. Oh, thanks. 
Oh, I, li I liked it. Bit of rock and roll, bit of playing. Yeah. You know, it's like how it used to be years <laughs> ago. Before people were sat there going, you know, you know, you know, on the emulators and the, the synths. It'd be nice to see a return to that. Yeah, well, they'll be coming back in the new year to play some UK dates, so um, we're going to see them. Apparently, they are a brilliant live band. You bet. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, let's go on to the next video, then. This is well, it's from Glenn Medeiros, whose last single sold over half a million copies in the UK alone. I wonder if you'll have the same success with Long and Lasting Love. Oh. Hello? Jenny? Glenn! Hi! Where are you? Everybody's here. I can't wait to see you. Something's come up. They called a rehearsal today, and I just won't be able to make it. Glenn, no. Come on, Glenn, they're waiting for us. Look, Jenny, I gotta be going. Look, I'll call you later, okay? Sorry. I understand. Birthday, Jenny. I love you. A long and lasting love. Not many people find it. But those who do their whole life through put their heart and souls behind them. A long and lasting love. A long and lasting love. What I always dreamed of And when I looked into your eyes I knew I'd really seen love Long Well, I, as a, you know, once, once, the, once the acting had stopped That was it, you know, that was it for me I mean, I couldn't take the music, but that was spectral it's a bloody disgrace <laughs> Bloody disgrace <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to... Do we have to fling this filth at our pop kids? It's a bloody disgrace. Oh, no. but it's what we all go through. It's talentless. I'm sorry. Talentless. Watching the news is better than that. <laughs> I think watching my opening links actually is probably better than watching <laughs> that video. <laughs> but they really, really loved each other and he had to go away. I wish you'd bloody go away. <laughs> <laughs> the poor little boy, he's only 17. That's probably his first girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> oh it's sickening, it's sickening. Come yes, on, we're come all throwing no, I've got a bit of rock and roll gossip, actually, because that is not his girlfriend. Oh, really? Apparently, oh, that's a landering that, bastard, it, let me just, all. It's, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he's very close to um, Debbie Gibson. Oh, think of the babies they'd make. They'd be so clean and squeaky and cute. <laughs> <laughs> and all it have really is a nightmare. But you kind of have to think, well, when I was 14, I kind of did that kind of thing. Leon Hammett with Glenn Medeiros. <laughs> 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 but it ain't rock and roll, really, is it? No, and if it's not rock and roll, We're what is interested. it? If it's not rock and roll, it'll sell a million. <laughs> so, welcome to the number one spot, Glenn Medeiros, yet yep. again. Yep. Well, you're going to be fighting with him, both of you, actually. You're going to be fighting there out I the think front she, line I with think, Glenn. I think the lady's got the edge on me. Yeah, but he'll beat us both hands down. Oh, yeah, he'll, he'll beat us, there's no doubt about that. But not for long, though, because the force is rising. <laughs> and live music's coming back. And what do you think about Glenn's um, obvious career in acting? Well, I think... You know, when they remake Love Story, he should probably be there. Kurt, do you think he's um, definitely a man destined for the big screen? Uh, I don't out. know. I suppose he's, he's destined There's for the door really out. There's this really good porno <laughs> company I've heard of, yeah, that he'd probably do quite well in. Oh, yeah? He'd probably, you know, become a porno star or something, maybe. Not Oscars, though, I don't think. No? No. OK, well, then, poor old Glenn. Well, let's go from a young <laughs> man... Poor old Glenn. <laughs> let's go from a young man to a young lady. <laughs> Vanessa Paradis here with a new one based on the story of Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy, and strangely entitled, Marilyn and John.
I could have understood more of what she was saying because the title Marilyn and John actually does intrigue me but uh, I don't know how much she would really know about the subject because she's very young isn't she mm, 16 years but I think she's actually probably 14 and if we'd watched the video a little longer I would have probably understood slightly more what it well what we, relation we, we, it... we we came out early on that video so that we'd have time to talk I about know, it uh, but there didn't <coughs> seem in that first minute there didn't seem to be much relation between that and the intrigue between Kennedy and Monroe but you you're, know, you're, I think you're Vanessa, a Marilyn fan, aren't you? Mm, and also, even more lately, very interested in the whole Kennedy family. That's something I've been reading up Have on. you checked out Dead Marilyn? I think I saw him appear. Dead Marilyn, on Dead Marilyn probably one of the most exciting cabaret acts in the land right now. Is but um, let's get back to, the, to Vanessa Paradis, Kirk. What was... I don't know if she's got a taxi. She, sh she should go home, really. <laughs> Kirk Brandon speaks out well, again. I mean, <laughs> I, it's not my sort of cup of tea. Do you reckon she's going to do, I mean, she looked good on screen. Do you reckon she's going to be like the, the next, the, you know, sort of the Jane Birkin of the 80s? Do I think she's she... gorgeous. I really do. I mean, I d whatever's happening behind the scenes, business-wise and career-wise and everything, just looking at her, and her voice is so sweet and she's so attractive, she can melt so many hearts yeah. up on, yeah. Great but, up. you know. Kurt, you're twitching. <laughs> I'm twitching, yeah. <laughs> you <better. laughs> um, No final words. I've got no final word on that yeah. one. I mean, it's just... It's all right, I suppose, if you're into that. You know, if you're, uh, you know, 45 plus or whatever, everyone's fantasy, chicken yeah, movies. you're a paedophile. Well, listen, right. I've got to thank you both now. I'm afraid that's time up on Video View, but thanks both of you for your um, views, which have been very interesting, and wish you all the best in the race to the charts. Let's see who gets to the top first, eh? Glen Medeiros. Glen Medeiros. Yes, well, that's it for another week here on Video View. Still loads more to come on Night Network, but I'll see you next week for more of the same but different, you know.